Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 12.58 a.m. on this absolutely beautiful Friday evening going into Saturday. It is currently 70 degrees outside. It's warm, but like not super muggy. I currently have the heat on in my car because I keep having to defrost my windshield and then I get it defrosted and then it's so hot in the car that I turn on the air and then it, it frosts up again. So I'm trying to kind of balance it out with the window. Anyway, how are you guys doing this evening? I had such a just magically amazing day today. I had such a great day. I feel like I got so much accomplished today. I just was in a really great mood all day today. Um, so, well, let's start, okay, <laughs> let's start all over the place. Last night, I stayed up super, super late. I, um, I mean, not like I usually do, but I had to get up early because I had a hair appointment this morning. And so, oh, here, here's my new hairdo. Hairdo's for you. Um, so I went to bed at probably like 5.15 or something last night, 5.15, 5.30. And um, then I had to get up at like 10 o'clock, so I only got like five hours of sleep, which I know to a lot of people probably does, it sounds like a lot, but it's not for me. I need a lot more than five hours of sleep. Can some of you out there like get enough sleep in like four to six hours? I used to be that way, like, I used to not need as much sleep, which is interesting because they say that like as you get older, you need less sleep, but I feel like I've needed more sleep the older that I've gotten. So anyway, um, but I got up and I was like awake and um, ready to go. So anyway, um, but I was, didn't get a lot of sleep. So anyway, Went and got my hair cut, and then I had a recovery commitment at two o'clock. I was running errands in between. I returned a pair of shoes to Nordstrom Rack that I had ordered online, and then I got some stuff at Nordstrom. Oh, it's actually back here, I think. It's back here somewhere. Anyway, my bag is back there. I'll show you when I stop at some point. And I got two bathing suits, and then I got, because <laughs> I don't know that I need more bathing suits, but this bathing suit that I bought, swimsuit, that I bought at Target, I'm gonna have to return it because it is like way, way too big on me. Um, which that's nice, right? <laughs> that I buy something that's way too big on me, because usually it's the other way around. Um, so I'm gonna have to return that swimsuit. And then when I was at Nordstrom Rack, all their swimsuits were on sale. And so I just was like, well, I'm gonna go, I bought two. One was 19 and the other one was 37. And then I saw this thing when I was in line and it was to keep your bills in place. I wish I could reach the bag and I would show you guys, but I'll have to just stop and show you. Anyway, um, and then I came home and um, I, well, I did that in between my hair appointment and um, my recovery commitment. I also went to DSW and um, I didn't find anything at DSW that I wanted. They used to have like really cute shoes in there, but I was really surprised today. They didn't really have anything that I liked, except for maybe another pair of Birkenstock plastic sandals, which you can get anywhere at this point. And um, then I went and did a review at Dunkin' Donuts of the pumpkin cream cold brew and the pumpkin donut. And then I had my recovery commitment. And then I came home after that and I filmed videos. Well, oh, I went to Aldi too, because I had never been to Aldi before, the grocery store. And I put that up on my Peter Does Stuff channel. And then I also did a booktube video while I was out. I did the review at Dunkin' Donuts. And then when I came home, I filmed um, a Peterisms video and I started uploading that. And I was getting like really, really tired. And then Alex came home and I was still doing like the stuff on the computer. He like took the dogs out and fed them. And then he went upstairs to lay down because he was like exhausted too. And so um, I went upstairs to just kind of like hang out and talk to him. And um, I was laying in bed and I was like, I think I'm just gonna lay down for a little bit. I had planned on like making a drama video 
and I said, I'm just gonna lay down for like 20 or 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna um, go downstairs and film this drama video, and he was like, okay, babe. And um, so I turned on the fan, that should have been a sign right there. I love sleeping with my fan. I turned on the fan and um, got into bed and was like cozied up next to Boo Radley and Tucker was playing with his toys and I just was so calm and peaceful and the next thing I know, I woke, well my phone, I try to usually set an alarm like when I take a nap because if I don't, sometimes I'll just sleep and sleep and sleep which is exactly what happened but really didn't expect to sleep this long. I must have been a a lot more tired than I thought I was. Um, I my phone was downstairs because I was uploading a video on it, and um, so I didn't have my phone to set an alarm on. So I was just like, "Well, I'm not going to sleep that long anyway." I really didn't think I was going to fall asleep, honestly. Which is what I say to myself sometimes when I lay down late at night. I'm like, "I'm not going to fall asleep. I'm just going to rest my eyes here for 15 or 20 minutes." The next thing I know. I woke up and Alex was going downstairs and that, I couldn't see the clock. I thought it said six something, but then it was dark. So I kind of was like squinting at the clock and it said 840 something. And I was like, oh my God, I woke up so late. And so he went downstairs and was watching Grey's Anatomy. I fell back asleep. He made a salad and everything, grilled chicken and whatever on the George Foreman grill. I fell back asleep and I woke up and it was like 10.30 something. And I need to tell you, I felt out of it. Like, I felt like I had slept for like nine hours. So I woke up and I went downstairs and I put up my vlog that I had been um, uploading. I put up my Peter Rosen's video that I've been uploading. Did some other stuff. Then I called Tanya because he was watching Grey's Anatomy. He's trying to like catch up and get all the episodes watched. Uh, man, that is like the saddest show in the entire world. I don't think I've ever sat in the same room while Alex is watching it. When it isn't like somebody's died, someone's broken up. It's always like some tragic thing that's happened. Man, that show is like, maybe I should start watching it. Is it that good? Is it good? I don't know. But like, I mean, my husband is obsessed with that show, but it is so sad. So, talk to Tanya. And then... Alex and I were talking about our trip, and then I did a bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah, and now I'm here. So that was that, that was my evening. Well, that was kind of my whole day, wasn't it? Last night I finished Flipped for Murder by Maddie Day. I gave it four out of five stars. Um, I really liked it. Did I even show myself open the Diet Coke on here tonight? I don't think I did. Well, I'm having a Diet Coke. There you go. And I'm drinking it in my favorite PP glass. Did I show that already? I don't know. Anyway, read the Maddie Day book, flipped for murder, gave it four out of five stars. It was really, really good. Um, I mean, by the end of it, I really loved it, honestly, and was like really, I'm really excited to read the rest of the series. I didn't um, give it five stars because, I mean, it just isn't, like, the most amazing book in the entire world. But it, it's a good, good... It's probably my second favorite cozy mystery series that I've ever read. N even more the, than the Dorinda Jones books next to the Misfortune series. It reminds me a lot of the Misfortune series in some kind of ways. Um, it was so funny because I was talking to my neighbor today. She brought me over some tomatoes. Her friends had just got back in town from some farm that they went to. And so she shouted at me across the street. She's like, Peter. And I said, yeah, this is my neighbor that loves the Cozy Mysteries. And she was like, you want some tomatoes? And I usually would say like no to that. Like, you know, but here I was talking about how I wanted a tomato and mozzarella sandwich and all this kind of stuff. I was like, yeah, sure. So she brought over this bag. We met like in the street. And, so she had all these tomatoes, and I said, oh, I'll, you know, I'm just going to pick four of them. I don't need that many of them. They were small little tomatoes, but they're super ripe, and they look really delicious. So, yeah, um, that was really nice. And so I said to her, I said, oh, I finished that Maddie Day book. And she said, you did what you think. And I said, I loved it. I said, I, but I was confused about her age for a lot of the book. Like, I thought she was a lot older. I said, she didn't act like a 27-year-old act, I didn't think. And she goes, 
because she's responsible. <laughs> I said, oh, is that what it is? And she started laughing. She's like, yeah, I love those books. But anyway, I love the cozies so much. So I read that last night, and then I started the new, uh, my new book that I'm reading for Vegas, which is the Michael Connolly book, Void Moon, because I want to be like kind of like into it before like, you know, I get there. I had, I'm listening to it, I started listening to it at two times speed, and then it seemed kind of slow, so I was like, like the story's not slow, but like the narrator, like I can listen to it faster. So I sped it up to two times 5.5 speed, and I think the book is like a total, it's like 11 hours, it gets a total of like, I have four hours left to listen to it. Um, I just finished the first hour, so I have like 10 hours total left, but like, you know, you get what I'm saying, divided by 2.5. Uh, I ain't got my glasses on, I can't do math, but I do know, I feel like I almost know like how to divide a book apart, how long it's gonna be, because I know like 10 hours, you know, divide, okay, anyway. It's 240 uh, minutes, which comes to, that's four hours, you get it? Okay, so anyway, to listen to it. But, um, so I listened to that last night a little bit before I went to bed. It's really good. I don't remember tons of it. Like, uh, I don't, well, first of all, I very rarely reread a book. Um, unless it's like a book that had some huge like impact on me when I was younger, like To Kill a Mockingbird or Catcher in the Rye. Catcher in the Rye is probably the book that I have reread the most. And in all honesty, like, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird, I love the book, but I like the movie more. And they're completely different. The book and the movie are, I mean, they're not completely different, but there's a lot in the book that's not in the movie. But I still think it's a fantastic um, adaptation. I was actually talking to my old sponsor about this. And we were talking about, somehow we got on talking about To Kill a Mockingbird. He's like, I always forget how much you love that book. He's like, I love that book too. And I said, and he goes, oh, but that actress, she just ruined the movie. And I go, what? And he goes, yeah, that actress that played Scout, she was nothing like Jean Louise. I said, Mary Badham, she was Scout. Like, she was perfect for that role. And we got in this funny argument about it. I mean, not an argument, but discussion about it. And he was laughing. He was like, all right. But anyway, I don't know when I would have first read this book. Years ago, years and years ago. Um... I mean, probably, you know, it's interesting because, like, in my mind's eye, like, Alex and I will have been together 13 years next week, right? 13 years is a really long time. And I always kind of look back in, like, 10 minute, 10, 10 minute, 10 year increments in my head. And the reality is, that like we're closer to 1520 you know and uh, I mean not closer to 20 but we're closer to 15 definitely and then 10 and I'm like I still in my head feel like it was just like 10 years ago that we got together there's some days that it feels like we've been together forever and there's other days that it feels like we just Met, you know, and it's sometimes weird for me when I think about like Alex, like he just turned 37, he's gonna be 40 here in a couple years. Like, to imagine like my husband 40, like, is crazy to me, you know, like it just is, I don't know, it's just because I wasn't 40 yet when we met, and um, but anyway, you know, my ex and I, we met in 2001 in June of 2001. So it has been exactly 20 years since he and I met. Like, if we were still together, we would have been celebrating 20 years together, right? Which is crazy when I look back on that, that it's been 20 years. But like, in all honesty, I probably read that Void Moon book. Like, a lot of books and movie references that I have are even from before then, you know? Before I met him. And so I probably read it I don't know when the book came out, but it it was either before or when I was with him. 
So it's been a really long time since I've read the book. I don't remember a lot about it. Um, as I'm reading stuff, stuff becomes a little bit more familiar to me. So it's about this con woman who had this boyfriend. They ran like con schemes together in Vegas, like I think taking down like casino stuff. And then he ends up getting murdered in something that happens. And you don't really know why yet. I don't know. I don't remember why. And she ends up getting arrested for it. And I think she's pregnant um, when she goes away and, like, has her baby. And then they she gives it up for adoption. Because the book starts. And, she, well, it, it starts with him, like, going up and doing the last job. And that's, like, a flashback. And then it goes into her going to the house where her daughter lives with their new family. Although you don't know that's what it is, but but you know that's what it is. You know what I mean? And and they're, the house is for sale, and so she's acting like she's a buyer for the house. And then she's uh, plotting this plan, basically, I think, to like... She's going to do some job that's going to get her a lot of money. And then her plan is going to be that she's going to take her daughter out of the country. And they're going to go live far away forever. I think that's the book. I don't really remember a whole lot of it, though. I don't remember anything that happens. Um, but I really, really am enjoying it. I love his writing. Um... I read that book a couple years ago. The Mid Not The Midnight Club, because that was like a James Patterson book from years ago. It was called The Mid Midnight Hour, maybe, or something. It was about a police officer in Los Angeles. I think it was a female detective. It was a female detective. Who she had like the, the night shift, the third hour, sh a third, um, she worked third shift as a police detective, like homicide detective. That was really good. I really liked that. I can remember, I think we were going to Fort Lauderdale, and I was, or Florida, Miami maybe, and I was sitting in, we got like a layover somewhere, and I was listening to it in the airport. I don't remember where that was. But anyway, that's that. Today I bought on iTunes... Are you ready for... I am so pumped about this trip. Alex saw... He was like, that is, he was laughing about it tonight. And Tanya said, you're trying to get so excited for this trip. I bought uh, Miss Congeniality 1 and 2. And I bought um, Oceans 11 and Oceans 13. I did not buy Oceans 12 because Oceans 12 takes place in Europe, I think. But I might end up buying it if I, like, watch the Ocean's Eleven movie and I'm, like, so obsessed with it that I have to see Ocean's Twelve, too. But I think it'll be really fun I watching those in Vegas. I've never watched them in Vegas. I remember watching the Ocean's Eleven movie um, before going to Vegas the first time and being really excited to see the fountains at the Bellagio. Because the whole movie ends in front of the fountains of the Bellagio, if you've never seen Ocean's Eleven. And I was so, so, so pumped to see them. And, um, so yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? I don't even know. But yeah, I'm excited about watching those movies in Las Vegas. I might watch them on the plane on the way out there. I was gonna get The Hangover, but I don't love that movie. It's not like, I think it's funny, but it's not like one of my favorite movies that I wanna watch over and over and over again. Bridesmaids now on another, and that is hilarious. I love Bridesmaids so much. Anything with Melissa McCarthy, I love. That Tammy movie, I don't care how stupid it is, I love that Tammy movie so much. That movie that she did that she got nominated for an Academy Award for where she played the woman in New York City that was like, I feel like she was a heavy drinker. I can't remember either that or she was friends with somebody that was a heavy drinker, but she was like stealing somebody's writing or something. That movie was really good. She was fantastic in that movie. I mean, I didn't feel like she was like greatly outside of her acting role of who she really is, but it was still good. It was something different for her, you know? Yeah, so I'm excited. We've been planning some stuff for Las Vegas. Um, so that I have actually something to talk about on the Las Vegas vlogs. I will fill you in as it goes. 
Alex's mom is going to be out there, and his cousin Maya lives out there, so we're going to probably meet up with them a couple times um, and do stuff with them, which that'll be fun. We've got our anniversary dinner planned, and then we were looking at some shows and stuff. We booked tickets tonight for a show, and... Uh, yeah. And I think <laughs> I don't know what else to talk about with the Vegas stuff. I feel like more prepared for this trip than I've been for a trip in a long time. Like this road that they were doing construction on, like what was it just last night or the night before? It's like all the construction is done. They paved all of this road. I don't know when they would have had the time to do this. Was it done when I went to Dunkin' Donuts today? Because this is a Dunkin' Donuts that I went to. Um, I feel like this is the most prepared that I have been. I just always have to make sure there's like certain things that I don't want to forget. You know, I mean, when I'm kind of with the attitude now. Like, if I go somewhere and... Like, I need contact solution, so I have to go get that tomorrow. But I'm kind of with this, the mindset. Like, I used to be like, oh, my God, if I don't have this, if I don't have, have Q-tips, and if I don't have this, and if I don't have deodorant, you know, it's like, well, you can get all that stuff if you forget it, you know what I mean, or toothpaste or whatever. But there are certain things that I have to have, like my medicine for my epilepsy. And I'm like, okay. So I always make sure I already got that, may set that out, you know. Um, other than that, it's like... Alex, like, makes a list of, like, what he's going to wear each day. And I know it would probably be more helpful if I did that. But I just, I just, I don't know. I'm going to take a couple shirts to wear in the evenings for dinner. And we were ta actually talking about this tonight. And sa I said to him, he was like, well, what do you want to do? And we were talking about different shows to go to, like different shows that we would want to go to. And the reality is that we've always kind of reserved it to Cirque shows. Like we've gone to almost all the Cirque shows. But right now, I think the only Cirque shows that are playing are Mystere, O, and, um, Mystere, O, and the Michael Jackson one. Now, I would pay full price to go see O again. I've seen it three or four times. I love it. There's just a, a feeling about it when you go to it. It's just, and it's in this pool, and it's just very surreal and otherworldly. I don't even really know how to explain it. It's just, if you've never seen O in Las Vegas, I love Zumanity, but O is the show that you have to go see. If you're gonna go ever see a, a Cirque show, and I was kind of surprised because Alex the other day was like, when we were talking about it, he was like, I mean, he goes, it's not my favorite show in the world. And I'm like, really? And he was like, yeah. We went last time and we saw La Rev, which is at the Wynn. And it's kind of like the Wynn's version of O. Um, and it was beautiful. but And it was in a pool. But it was a che kind of a cheesier version of O. Cirque shows are done, like, incredibly well. Like, incredibly well. They're so sophisticated. They invent their own language. The music is just surreal. On top, I mean, you literally come out of a Cirque show and you feel like you've gone to another world. Um, you know, a lot of our friends go to like magic shows and com comedy shows. I don't really have, uh, there's a couple shows I wanna see in Las Vegas, but those aren't, I mean, uh, There's just not tons of shows I want to see. We, the book, the show that we booked tonight was not a Cirque show. Um, and we'll probably book one other show, I think. Um, I think Alex is going to try to go out Friday night with Maya because um, Cascade is at... Um, Cascade is playing at what do you call it, at um, at some club there, and he wants to see Cascade again. And so he was like, do you want me to get you a ticket too? 
And I said, no. I said, do you and Maya just go out and have fun? I said, I will get like room service that night or we'll eat before you go out. And I said, and then I'll like just have a chill night of it. You know, like take a bath in the big bathtub and um, you know, wear comfy clothes and I'll go gamble, you know? And I'll have a fun night of it. So that will be fun on Friday night. And um, then we have our anniversary all planned out. But I said to him tonight, like, and here we are, like, this is the thing. Like, we always kind of, like, well, I think, like, today is different, too, than, not different completely, but, like, Vegas is a different city than when we first started going to it. It's definitely a different city than when I first started going to it. Because when I first started to go, I mean, you could still go to, like, the Luxor buffet for $5.99 or something. I mean, there were buffets that were that cheap. There's, there aren't buffets that are that cheap anymore, you know? The buffets there are expensive. And, um, the Bellagio buffet is like, it may be like 60 bucks a person. It's like 50 bucks a person. Maybe it's 30. I don't know. It's like 30 to 50 bucks a person, I think. But Co Cosmopolitan is the same way. And it's fun to do a buffet at least once while you're there, you know? Um, so, yeah. What was I going to say? <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, but I know. So, I was talking to Alex tonight, and I said, you know, I said the last couple years, well, with, like, our anniversary, we wanted to make sure that we had a restaurant, right? But, like, when we go to Vegas, we try to, or when we go to uh, Miami, like, we try to, in the last couple times we've gone, really, like, have reservations for a lot of the restaurants that we go to, because you don't know if you'll get reservations if you don't, you know? Well, Vegas has become the same way. But, you know, when we first went to Vegas, and this is what I told him tonight, I said, you know, 13 years ago when we went to Vegas for the very first time in November, it was the week before Thanksgiving, we just kind of went on a whim. I said, do you want to go to Vegas? He was like, yeah. So I booked it and we went. We stayed at the hotel at Mandalay Bay. We were there for like four nights. And I'll never forget because like the first night that we got there, um, like we went down into the casino and Alex, was, I was like, what do you want to do? And he was like, well, I'd like to get a drink. And then I was like, okay, well maybe I can gamble for a little bit. And he was like, sure. So... Um, we sat down at a slot machine and I gave him like 20 bucks and we sat down on either side of each other and he got a drink and he was like, I can't believe they give you a drink in like a glass. And I was like, yeah, and you can drink anywhere too. And so we were sitting there playing like penny slots and he hit like six or eight or a thousand dollars or something like right away and took his ticket out. It was going to go back up to the room and put it in the room. So anyway. But later we like walked out on the strip and he was like, I can't believe I could just walk around and have a drink out here. And we had such a great time. And I don't even remember what restaurants we went to. I think we did go see O on that trip and Zumanity. But then like for our anniversary or for our uh, honeymoon trip, like we literally every day just, I mean, there was no thought about where are we going to go to eat? What show are we going to go see? Da, 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 da. We literally just laid out by the pool, took naps, had romantic evenings and days, and we'd be like, what are you hungry for tonight? Oh, I'm hungry for pasta. Let's go have pasta. You know, it was just, it was that a lot. And it was incredible. And it just, there was, it just was like, let's just hang out. It was, there was not a lot of thought put to it. So I started looking at these uh, different shows and there's like no tickets for these shows anymore. So tonight I said, are you going to want to go to a show? Oh, cause we had been talking about that. And I said, I just want to like play it by ear. Like, let's just have fun. If we decide we want to go to a show tonight, let's go to a show. Well, then I started looking at some of the shows and I'm like, they're all booked like all through. Right. And I was like, if we're going to get it, go to a show, we're going to have to buy the tickets for at least one. So I was like, we should buy it at least for one night while we're there, you know, tickets for a show. And he was like, yeah, I agree. Let's do that. So. I actually think the trip that we're going on with Jason and Melissa and all these people, nine couples, you guys, I've never been on a couple's trip like that before in my life. But I actually, they're not all coming. Yet. Melissa and I were talking about it the other day because we're not all like flying in on the same day. Like some of us are flying in two days early and staying one day late. Like 
there's only like probably I think three or four couples that are doing three couples that are doing that and we're one of them and Melissa and Jason are the other one and I think Aaron and Eric are the third couple um but it'll be fun I'm excited about it I, I at first I was kind of hesitant I was like mm, I don't know about all that and I do think that will be a trip that's very much kind of like let's just kind of hang out and do whatever I also it stopped. I also do really well, and I kind of like trips when people are like, hey, tonight we're doing dinner at such and such place at 8 o'clock. Um, we'll see you guys all then. Do what you want to do until now. You know, some of us are going to the pool to hang out. I like that. Like, that's real casual. And then if I'm at the pool until, like, 2 o'clock and I want to go upstairs and take a nap or whatever before dinner, I can do that. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Like, that's actually, like, a good trip for me. So I think that trip will be a lot like that, and I'm excited about it. And we're doing the Zach Bagans uh, Haunted Museum while we're out there, too, on that trip. So, that'll be fun. I'm excited about that trip. But I don't think we'll go to any shows on that trip. And it'll just be, like, dinners and laying out and all that kind of stuff. It'll be fun. So I'm super, super excited about it and I've got everything like laid out that I need and I just have to do like a couple more errands and um, load a wash. I'm really, really excited about us getting these new wedding bands. Like, really excited about it. I just haven't been able to wear a ring in so long, you know? And I really miss that. I really miss wearing a, a ring. Um, I mean, when we had, when I got the engagement rings for us from Tiffany's, I like never took those rings off or that ring off. Like, I love that ring. I still have, I mean, obviously I still have it and it's like in perfect condition. I just can't fit my finger into it. And, um, but I love that ring so much. And I think that it really signified something for me too, you know, like being engaged. It was like different. It was like all of a sudden, like, you know, like this is like, I'm, this is serious. Take me seriously for my love, you know, like I, I know that probably sounds kind of cheesy and kind of corny, but as somebody that like felt like I had to fight my whole life for anybody to validate or accept me based on my, who I was attracted to, like it finally felt for me, like I was like everybody else. And I love that. And then Alex, you know, bought our wedding bands. They're from Tiffany's and they're engraved and um, they're beautiful. They're just like um, silver wedding bands that match um, the other rings because the other rings are thicker. I don't know if I'm going to get um, a silver one or a gold one. That's the one thing. Alex was like, you do what you want to do. I mean, they're all basically the same price. Um, he was like, you do what you want to do. But we were talking about the rings and when I looked at them. And when you look on the website, like the thinner ones are called wedding bands. And the thicker ones are not. And I actually like the thicker ones more. And Alex was like, I want to get the wedding bands. He was like, because this is not just like a fun ring to wear. This is like a wedding band. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So, um, so that's super exciting. I don't have to see how it looks, you know, and which one I like better. The other two rings are not gold. That's the only thing. And Alex was like, I'm going to wear all three rings at the same time. So he wants his silver or platinum so it matches. Um, so I'm excited. I'm really excited gonna be a fun trip he's like what are you most excited about and I said just hanging out with you in the hotel going to eat good dinner laying out by the pool it's gonna be real fun and then we also need to figure out if we're gonna go somewhere in October I would really really like to 
Um, we'll either like rent a house in um, Florida somewhere or He's like, but don't you want to go to the beach? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I want to go to the beach, but I don't know that I want to, like... You can run a house with a private pool for, like, a lot cheaper than, like, renting a place that's, like, on the beach, you know, like an Airbnb, but we'll talk about it. Um, so, or he had also talked about the possibility of, like, going to San Diego and going to visit Mel. <clears throat> um... Not like we did it last time, like he go to San Diego and I go visit Mel, but that's also an opportunity, that's also an option, you know, is that I go to Arizona for like four days and he goes to San Diego for four days. Um, but I kind of like to see my brother-in-law and his girlfriend too, so, well, I mean, I wouldn't kind of, like I would like to see them and go out there. Um, so we'll just have to look and see which one we're gonna do. The thing is that they're completely different trips. Like, if we go to Florida in October, I'd almost kind of like to go to Florida in October, and then if we're going to go to San Diego for, like, a long weekend or something, reserve that for later in the year, because it's already cold in October and I'm not cold in San Diego, but we went in September last time and it wasn't super warm. Um, and it, I feel like it was the end of September when we went. I don't know. He went to that music festival. So if we go in October, it's probably not going to be really, really super warm, like lay out on the beach kind of thing. So if we're going to do that trip, I would rather do that in Florida in October. And then if we're going to go maybe to San Diego, do that, I don't know, November or early December, just take a long weekend there or something would be fun. That's actually not a bad idea. I haven't talked to, I've talked to Alex about that. I feel like we have to feel like, we feel like we have to consolidate all these trips into October, but that might be fun to do a long weekend in um, San Diego. Those Tic Tacs of Tanya's, my lord! Tic Tac. Oh, the battery is dying. God, it's so early on this battery. What is the deal? This is a fully charged battery. I literally, you guys, just took it out of the battery charger. Okay, hold on. I know I didn't make sure that I brought my battery tonight. I almost reached in there and was like, are you kidding me? I'll be right back, hold on. Okay. I'm also really excited <clears throat> about starting to like nest for the fall and winter and I, I'm not done with summer like I love summer you know and but the pool's gonna be closed in two weeks um but I am excited to start nesting for like the fall and winter and you know getting out the fall candles and the cinnamon and the pumpkin and the apple candles and um you know the Halloween stuff and I'm excited about getting like some mums. Um, Costco actually has huge mums right now, but the problem is, actually, you know what I might do? Because I was like, they're gonna be gone by the time that I buy them, because I still wanna keep my plants that I have, but I might buy them and keep them on the back patio and just water them out there. That might be what I do, because, so I get some big mums like that, because it's really hard to buy, like, huge mums, you know, at places. I think they're, like, $30 a piece, which is expensive, but they should last all through fall. They're beautiful. Um, I'm going to keep my plants out there as long as they'll stay. So if they stay till into in October, that's when they're going to stay out there. I'm not going to take them down anytime soon. And if, you know, I put mums up for two weeks in October and, and then all through November, that's what we do. And then in November, I put up little Christmas trees. But I'm excited to start nesting for fall and winter. 
Um, I was telling Alex, I was like, we need to do it like a deep clean and put some of the stuff away that's like out on the counters and stuff like that. And I redid that Starbucks cupboard. That was really nice. And then I have two other cupboards in the kitchen that I have to get done. And when it says they're done, our kitchen is like, I mean, other than getting it redone, it's all the cabinets are where we want them to be. And then um, we have this like long buffet desk in like behind the desk or behind the table that I work on, on my computer. And it has like the record player and records on it. And it has like all these like books and photo albums of Alex's and just like all kinds of just like stuff on it. And we need to like go through it and like pick what we want and put away like what we don't want out. I also need to make this crate that I have for my record player and I need to put the new um, record player needle in there. I bought that stuff, you guys, like four years, three years ago, something like that, and never put it together. And it's still sitting there. And I never listened to my record player. So we need to clean off all of that. Um, I mean, one of the things that would be fantastic about having the basement done and completed, not just cleaned, but like completed, would be as if we had a desk down there then like all the stuff that we keep on that dining room table could go downstairs and onto that desk. And I could just work from there, you know? And even if I filmed a video in the living room, just take it down there and upload it from down there, you know? Um, and Alex has all kinds of stuff over there too. Oh, he has his vision board on there from January. He keeps it out there to remind himself on a da daily basis. So, I mean, uh, we just need to clean that off and get that put away. We have a bunch of games over there. I have a bunch of graphic novels over there. We just need to clean it up and maybe just make it nice and put a couple candles over there. Um, yeah, so that's that. nice flannel sheets on the bed. I've got to look at some like, I don't want to put the, the tartan red plaid out until, well, we've got a, like a nice like gray, we've got a, a couple nice duvet covers and comforters, but I would really like to have a flannel like one on there. I need to get online. I'd like to look and see the exact one that I bought. I think it's Pottery Barn, the red one, and see if they have another one on there that's a different color. Um, Cause then I could use that like after Christmas and then I could use that like in September, October, November, you know? Um, and then use the Christmas stuff. I'm glad that I bought all that stuff for Christmas. So like we saved those pillows. We have them in the, the chest at the end of our bed or whatever that thing is called. And um, Alex like did a really nice job one night. He like arranged all of the linens in our closet. And so we've got them all arranged by like duvet cover and sheets and all that kind of stuff. And our beach towels are up there. Um, so that's really nice. Um, yeah. I love getting excited about certain seasons and putting the house together and all that kind of stuff, you know? You know, it's interesting because I didn't go to the pool a ton this summer. And I'm sure after summer is over, I'll be sad that like I didn't do a lot of night swims and things like that, because I really didn't, you know? It's like, I went to the pool to swim at night a handful of times. And I was gonna do all these sw swims. I was gonna go to the pool every day, you know? And here it is, two weeks before the cl pool closed, and I'm gonna be in Vegas, and I haven't really gone to the pool, you know? And it's like, maybe, you know, the last week of August and going into September before the pool closes, maybe I'll go up there a lot that week. Hopefully the, it won't be so rainy, but even if it is, maybe I'll just go there for swims and stuff, you know? But I'm sure I'll look back on it and be like, God, I wish I had gone a lot more and whatever. But you know, at the same time, like, this has been a really good summer. Like, this doesn't seem like, like June seems like a really long time ago. It really, really does. Um, 
Like, race day weekend seems like a really long time ago. It doesn't just seem like it was just yesterday, you know? It doesn't seem like... Now watch, and like two, two or three vlogs from now, I'll say, God, this summer went so fast, you know? I probably said it about a week ago. And my opinion changes. I'm allowed to have that. But it doesn't... Tonight, it doesn't feel to me like... Um, this summer went super fast. It feels like... I don't know. It doesn't seem like yesterday. It was just June yesterday. We've done a lot of really fun things this summer, you know? We've had a lot of great dinners. We've taken some fun trips. Um, we're still going to be taking some fun trips. We've got to hang out with friends a lot. Um, you know, it's been good. It's been real good. Bum, 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 I was talking in my Peter Christmas video the other day about staying present. And I had talked about it on my vlog, too. You know, it's like, I struggle so hard with that, you guys, about just staying in today. and not looking forward to the next things. I almost feel like it's so ingrained in me. I don't know, maybe it's something I got from my parents. Maybe it's how they talked when I was growing up. I don't really remember. I don't really remember how they were with stuff like that. I mean, I don't remember either of my parents being like sad when Christmas was over. I don't remember that. <clears throat> or them being like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't remember that. Definitely not my dad. <laughs> Definitely not my dad. Um, my dad can be cynically sarcastic sometimes to the point of like, where you don't know if he's joking or not. Like, my dad just does not enjoy holidays. He just is like, he thinks they're stupid and... <laughs> I wouldn't say he's bah hum humbug about it, but, I mean, because he laughs about it and whatever. I mean, he likes Christmas and all that. He just doesn't get really that excited about anything. I mean, like, I'll say to him, like, did you stay up, like, on New Year's to watch the ball drop or something? And he'll say, I haven't stayed up until midnight on New Year's since I was, like, 35. He'll say something like that to me, you know? Um, so... My mom, she got really excited about holidays. My dad had a couple years where he was really excited about holidays. I remember like when I was in high school, he got really excited and, um, but like my mom, she always got excited for holidays. Halloween she loved. My mom loved Christmas. My mom loved, I mean, she loved every holiday. Valentine's Day, Easter. I, mean, I always got a basket, even up until my mom was putting my basket together, you know, the year that she passed away. Valentine's Day, she always, like, made cookies and wore red, and, you know, she would get me something, a special gift for me on Valentine's Day. She loved Valentine's Day, and my mom loved religious holidays as well, you know. She went to, like, leading up to Easter, she went to Monday, Thursday, and Ash Wednesday, and Good Friday, and Palm Sunday, and she did all of those. She's very active in her church, you know. I don't really remember my mom loving 4th of July so much. I don't really remember anything about 4th of July with my mom, which is funny because, well, that's not true. As an adult, um, I do. One year, my mom and my ex and I, and Tanya and her husband, Eric, we went to go see the fireworks. We made a big picnic and stuff, like in a, like in a picnic uh, basket. That's something I wish Alex and I would have done this summer is made a big, like, meal in a picnic basket. But um, we took this picnic basket out, and I remember we sat on the grounds at Ivy Tech College here in Indianapolis, or university, I think it's just called college. And, um, and I remember we had, like, such a good time, but, like, we looked over at one point when the fireworks were going off, and, like... Tanya and Eric were kissing, and my mom's like, oh my god, they're smooching, isn't that so sweet? She's like, oh my god, they're smooching, they're so romanticals, or something like that. <laughs> my mom did use words like I do, though. That's one thing we have in common. She would get so teased about that. She'd be like, oh my god, she would get, it was so cute. She loved it. 
it was just cheesy. That was fun. That was one year. And then, um, there were like several years where, well, my ex and I, we used to always go to, we used to go to Seymour, Indiana, um, where he was from for the fireworks on 4th of July. And we would go to Seymour City Pool during the day. And then we would go back to our, or back to our um, hotel. We would take showers and change and stuff. And then that night, we would go with our two friends that lived down there, a couple that I'm still friends with. And we would like drive out to somewhere, I don't remember where it was, but you'd like look over this field and all these fireworks would go off and then you would like tune your radio station to it. And like the music would go to the fireworks. I do feel like there were many years, like with my mom when she was alive, that I felt responsible for, like as an adult, like making sure that she had something to do for 4th of July. But that being said, I remember like, Caroline always had like barbecues and stuff on like Memorial Day, Labor Day, 4th of July. And a lot of them, most of them, I never went to because my ex and I had things that we were doing. So I didn't typically go to those that Caroline had. I didn't even go later. Like we would be out of town or something. And so I feel like my mom typically went to that stuff. Or she would do like, sober friends would have like a party or a picnic or something. But she very rarely did that kind of stuff. Like she liked it when she did it, but it took like a lot of, like my mom had a lot of social anxiety like I did. Um, I mean, she was real talkative. Like I am when you got, you, like when you got to know her, she was super talkative, like you couldn't shut her up. Um, my friends used to, back in the day, my friend in Denver, he used to call her Motormouth Maybell from the movie Hairspray. Um, Cause my mom just like, She's like, oh, 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 I mean, she wore people out with her talking. And I definitely get that from my mom. My dad's a talker, too, and he's a storyteller, too, as well. Um, it was funny because Tani was telling me that her friend that visited this summer, she and her girlfriend from California, that her girlfriend told her, Peter and Tani have more stories than anybody I've ever heard in my entire life. It's true. We are all always telling stories. But, um... Yeah, my mom was a talker, and and she didn't know a stranger, but when it came to things like, like if she was at a grocery store, she would talk to anybody. If that was not how her social anxiety worked. Her social anxiety went was when she would go to like a gathering where it was people that she knew, like friends, but more so like people that she looked up to, like recovery people or work people or stuff like that. Then she'd be like super apprehensive about it. Like, well, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be a burden to them. They're probably only inviting me because they feel bad for me. I don't want anybody to feel bad for me because they think that I don't have a husband or anything else to do. She would always say that kind of stuff. And I'd be like, they invited you because they wanted you to go, mom. Like, seriously, like, just go, have a good time. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's going to probably be mostly couples. And I'd be like, okay. And then she'd go and I'd say, did you have a good time? Oh my God, I had the best time ever. We just sat around and talked all night long. I didn't get home until like 11.30 or 12. It was so much fun. Oh my God, the food was fantastic. They had bratwurst and they had hamburgers and I had one of each and then potato salad. Oh my God. And then they had a strawberries and shortcake homemade And because my mom loved food. Oh my God. She loved food so much. One of the things that would get my mom really upset was on holidays, we would all eat so quick and she would want to have like seconds and sometimes third, you know? And um, my aunt would start cleaning, clearing dishes. And so she, you know, like the, at both places they lived, the kitchen was right off the dining room. And so she'd get up and start clearing dishes and then other people would kind of like start going away, you know? And, um, my mom would get like real upset. Sometimes she would get upset to the point where it was almost kind of like, like she almost kind of like, she would say things in almost kind of like a childish way, like kind of like, like not a temper tantrum, but almost kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. Almost like, you know, her childhood trauma stuff was like coming out. She would say like, like she would get upset and she'd say, I just wanted to sit here and have like a really nice meal. Like, why is everybody getting up and leaving? Like I was gonna have seconds and thirds and my aunt would look at her and she'd say, honey, you can have seconds or thirds. You can have fourth and fifth if you want. But no, everybody else is done. She'd say, I know, but why can't we just all sit here and have a conversation, have a dinner? Like it would really upset my mom, you know? This hat has sat off center on my head like all week. And if I set it straight, it like hurts. I think it's because it's too loose or something. But it's been like that all week long. It's been driving me crazy. I think I actually need to tighten it.
And I would always tell my mom, I'd say, Mom, I'd say, you can have as much food as you want, you know, don't. See, now it feels too tight on my head, though, with my hair. But it fits better, I guess, I don't know. Anyway. Oh, look, they turned that CVS or Walgreens into a Dollar Tree, that's interesting. But yeah, she'd always get real upset about that. And I'd be like, Mom, don't get upset, it's okay, you know, like. She'd say, I know, but we can, we never get together and then we can't just sit down and have a meal. Like everybody's gotta be rushing, 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 rushing. And uh, I mean, and that was true, you know? I mean, it, I'm, I didn't take this hat off. I'm sorry, you guys, that my hair looks bad, but come on now. But it was true, you know? I mean, it was absolutely 100% true that I mean, Caroline and I have talked about that since. That's why we like have game night now, or like we play games when we get together and we stay over there for a long time, you know? And it's fun and I love it. And I'm, I'm, we need to do more of that. I just talked to Caroline the other day. I need to talk to her about um, when I get back, um, maybe we can get together and have like a cookout or something. Anything to do Labor Day weekend and Alex is gonna be out of town that whole weekend for this music festival and honestly he and a bunch of friends are going up there for it I'm kind of happy about it I'm kind of like okay I'll go swimming that weekend and you know I'll get some bad food and <laughs> I'll just have a real low-key fun weekend you know listen to some audiobooks Hang out with my doggies. It'll be fun. But I do need to see, I need to get off this uh, treacherous construction. They, I guess they didn't do this side yet though. Um, I do need to find out what like Tanya and my sponsor and stuff are doing that weekend. That would be kind of fun for us all to get together and do like have some kind of like cookout or something. Maybe I'll have to talk to them about that. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Again, see? Needing to stay present, but here's the thing. I feel like there's the weirdest sounds all over the place. But if I stay, if I stay, um, I think both of our cars, his and mine, are both like that car where it turns off. Tanya was asking me the other day, she's like, does that drive you crazy when the car turns off? Because mine does the same thing. I said, yeah, you can turn it off if you want to. It was so silent. But anyway, the thing about it is if I don't make any plans, then like Labor Day weekend will come up and I'll be like, hey, Tanya, what are you doing? Well, I already made plans with so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so -and, -so. and I'm like, so if you don't plan a little bit ahead, but I do believe that you can plan for the future in today, just not become consumed with, you know, the future. I was just gonna say something and now I don't remember what I was gonna say at all. Just talking about Tanya, Labor Day weekend. I don't remember. I had something I was gonna talk about though. Oh, I know what it was. I was sitting there talking about the sounds in Indianapolis. I read this article, so I follow like the news outlets on Twitter in Indianapolis, like their local news outlets. And I didn't read all the article that, or I didn't read the article, but there was um, a post, I meant to go back and read it, that's like city officials and like uh, like members of like the communities here in Indianapolis like met this last week about the upsurge and the, uh, of like how violent Indianapolis has become. And you know, you hear about these murders constantly and it's just like, it's just, I don't know, you know, one of Alex's friends was shot and killed and um, it's just, it's so sad. Like this town is just like, it. Did, I feel like there's always been violence to Indianapolis, but I feel like it has gotten so much worse than it was. But I didn't really know if that were true or not. It's just like, you know, I mean, the news is always like, if you watch the news, it's always like that. You know, well, there's another shooting in, you know, downtown Indianapolis. But then to actually see that like city officials and like members and pillars of the community met to see what they were gonna do about this violence, like that's interesting to me. You know, that they actually did all that. 
So hopefully it'll improve things around here. Hopefully. have big plans for the rest of the weekend? What are your plans? <laughs> oh my god, that pumpkin donut and muffin from Dunkin' Donuts was, the pumpkin muffin was, they were both so good. I was like, these are delicious. Yeah, I was impressed with Aldi today, kind of, but like, I was impressed because it was different than I thought it would be. It was cleaner. I don't know what I expected. I mean, I didn't expect like it to be like dirty, but I, when I say cleaner, I mean like, you know like when you go to Walmart or even Meyer, and there's like boxes in the aisles they haven't put away yet because they're constantly uploading, unloading stuff. Like, that's not dirty, but that's what I'm talking about. Like there was none of that there. I mean, it was literally like, Everything was like in its aisle, in its box, organized. It was impressive looking. The only thing is, it's like, if you wanted potato chips, they had like two brands and like four flavors. It wasn't like you could go there if you were specifically looking for like Pringles and they would have it. I mean, they might not have it. This guy has just stopped, this yellow light. Um, do you know what I mean? So like not everything that you would want. They have like a huge section of cheese, which I was kind of surprised by, but y'all know I love a good cheese. I do have to say that I think September is gonna be some cozy mystery food for me. I think I wanna get an apple pie and I wanna get some Wisconsin sliced cheddar to eat on top of it with whipped cream. I think that will be so much fun. I love the food in these. Um, and these cozy mysteries, so. Once I get done with this first uh, Vegas book, maybe I'll just download the second in the, the Maddie Day series. Because I really like that series. I don't know how many total are in there, five or six, I think. This one, the weather was just changing. Like, it was just getting colder. So the next one, it might be a Halloween one, which would be really fun to read that. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Well, you guys, I think I'm gonna get off here and listen to my audiobook for just a little bit so I can get a little bit more into it. And then go home and get some sleep. And um, I hope that you guys, well, first of all, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!